What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Today, I'm going to be showing off what is quickly becoming one of my favorite new decks in our Team Up Through Darkness and Blaze format, Spear Tomb Hoopa. This deck is so much fun to play. I originally got the deck from Mike Fouché's Twitter page, so big shout out to Mike Fouché for creating what has been an extremely fun one prize deck. I switched up a couple of cards. This deck is just so explosive and so powerful thanks to the Spear Tomb from Unbroken Bonds. Its Anguish Cry attack deals 10 damage plus 30 more damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon. And of course, you're going to be using that Building Spite ability to place a damage counter on your Spear Tomb every turn. Now, before the release of of Darkness Ablaze, we relied on Rainbow Energy, which got rotated out of standard format to help put damage counters on your Spirit Tomb, but there's actually way easier ways to ramp up damage counters on your Spirit Tomb, thanks to our newest set, Darkness Ablaze. First of all, we've got the new Spike Moth Stadium. Whenever a player's active Pokemon moves to the bench during their turn, you put two damage counters on that Pokemon. This allows you to very quickly ramp up damage counters on your Spirit Tombs, combined with copies of Switch and the new Hiding Darkness Energy which allows you to give the darkness Pokemon it's attached to free retreat. So you're going to be pivoting in and out of your spirit tombs, dealing 20 damage each time it moves in and out of the active position with your Spike Moth Stadium. It feels very similar to the Team Up Zapdos deck. For those of you that played Jirachi Zapdos when Team Up first came out, this deck feels like a super powered version of the Team Up Zapdos deck because we play the four Stellar Wish Jirachi. We're constantly pivoting in and out of Jirachi and using yet another switch card in the deck, Bird Keeper. The Bird Keeper engine with Jirachi and the scoop up nets and the switches and the hiding darkness energy. You could see how often these spear tombs are going to be moving in and out of the active position. Bird Keeper is an excellent new supporter card from Darkness Ablaze. Allows you to switch your active Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon and you draw three cards when you do it. So having two Jirachi in play and using Bird Keeper switching between them, scoop up nets to help you pivot in and out of the active is incredibly strong. We'd play just two Two GX Pokemon in the deck, one Oracorio GX and one Dedenne GX to help us draw through our deck. Two of the new Assault Gate Hoopa, which is an excellent Pokemon to start in this deck. You're usually going to want to reach for a turn one Assault Gate Hoopa to soften up opponent's Pokemon Vs and Pokemon V Maxes for a later Spear Tomb. Now, even though softening up Pokemon V Max with Hoopa is nice. You can actually one-hit KO every VMAX with the help of Galarian Zigzagoon. With 10 damage counters on your Spear Tomb, and I haven't mentioned yet, we can do that thanks to the new Cape of Toughness from Darkness Ablaze, which gives the basic Pokemon this card is attached to plus 50 HP, meaning that your Spear Tomb can have 110 HP, meaning that your Spear Tomb can deal 310 damage with 10 damage counters on your Spear Tomb, which is not very hard to negotiate. So dealing 310 damage, we've got the Galarian Zigzagoon, whose Headbutt Tantrum ability allows you to place an additional damage counter wherever you want on your opponent's board. And with the four copies of Scoop Up Net, you can very easily one-hit KO 320 HP Pokemon. You can also one-hit KO Eternatus VMAX 340 HP. All you need, Zigzagoon, two Scoop Up Nets, and 310 damage with your Spear Tomb, which is a lot, but it can be done. And then the rest of the deck is just pure consistency. Four bosses orders, since we don't always want to KO things, you want to always have that boss's orders to bring up whatever you want on your opponent's side of the field to end the game. Four bosses orders in this deck feels a lot like four Guzma in an original Zapdos from Team Up deck. We've got the four copies of Research, no disruption, just all out, pedal to the metal. We're going to be as aggressive as possible with this deck, dealing as much damage as fast as we can. Two copies of Anonymous Posture, Jinx are very good in this deck as well, just allowing you to move damage counters from your side of the field. So that's really nice because you can put bonus damage counters to fix math on your Spirit Tombs throughout the game. And if any of your other Pokemon happen to take residual damage from your Spike Moth Stadium, you could just use those damage counters later with the Ominous Posture to put them wherever you like. This deck is so much fun. I cannot reiterate how much I've enjoyed playing this deck so far in the games that I have played with it. Check out the gameplay and let me know what do you think of this powerful new Spirit Tomb Hoopa deck in the comments below. Looks like we're going to be playing second, and we open an awesome hand. We've got Spear Tomb and Hoopa here, and Bird Keeper as well. So I'm going to be able to get the turn one Assault Gate. I love to see that. We've got a Hiding Darkness Energy 2, and my opponent opens Crobat V. Looks like could be playing against Eternatus VMAX deck, judging by the Dark type deck box there, the Darkness Energy, but you never want to assume. But 
yeah, now I'm saying it's uh, pretty much any turn to speed max deck. Uh, I love that my opponent starts Crobat. And there's not a lot of great ways to remove the Crobat from the active unless you play Air Balloon or Switch. Uh, some lists play neither. I think it's really important to play those cards just for this kind of situation. But we could get a pretty decent swing into the Crobat here turn one, which I certainly like to see. I would love it if I could get a... Uh, would love it if I could get a Spike Moon Stadium or something like that off the top of my deck so that I could Bird Keeper and get 20 damage onto the Spear Tomb, but it's looking like that's not going to be something that we're going to be able to do. Now, this deck actually has the potential to one-hit KO in Eternatus VMAX with the help of Galarian Zigzagoon. With a Cape of Toughness on our Spear Tomb, they have 110 HP. If you get 10 damage counters onto the Spear Tomb, Anguish Cry actually deals 310 damage, meaning that... We only need one Zigzagoon and two Scoop Up Nets to one KO. Sure enough, Spike Myth right off the top. That is huge. We love to see that. And my opponent does have the Air Balloon on the Crobat V, so that's going to be a good start for them. We definitely want to Bird Keeper turn one, though, so I think we're just going to go Bird Keeper into the Hoopa. See three more cards. Definitely don't mind having the... Other Hoopa here, and we've got the energy, and I think that we could just put the Cape of Toughness down onto the Spear Tomb. We're going to place that, and then just kind of thinking about where do I want to go from here. I'm going to hold the Quick Ball and maybe just Day Day Change. I could see Day Day changing um, this next turn. So I think that uh, we're just going to attach the Dark Energy and probably Assault Gates, though I do anticipate that my opponent... We'll probably um, come up with the turn to the VMAX this next turn and knock out my Hoopa. And then this Crobat goes to the bench, but that's fine. Because, uh, you know, with 90 damage on it, this Hoopa here can clean up that Crobat for two prizes. So that's not bad. The Assault Gate, you know, it's great for softening up VMAXs as well. We could go just Assault Gate into this Eternatus VMAX when it comes into the active position. Inevitably, the thing we'd have to worry about in the Eternatus VMAX matchup is my opponent just pinging my spear tombs? I also really have to kind of keep an eye out for any sort of dangerous drill or something like that that my opponent might be looking to play because they could just remove my cape of toughness and then take a bonus prize, honestly, because they could just knock out the spear tomb. It looks like they are just going to place some more damage counters on the spear tomb. I love that because it just makes it so much easier for that spear tomb to ramp up to that 10 damage counter place where it's just going to be dealing out a ton of damage so small hand we definitely have to data change this uh i could get orc oreo gx as well orc oreo very dangerous against this matchup though because they could just assault gate it for knockout which is not something that we love to see so we're gonna go here and i top deck the other spear tomb so that's fine we're gonna go here, looking for our Dedenny out of the deck. And we're going to grab the Dedenny and look at our other attackers. Okay, that's fine. We're going to go here. And we're going to bench that. And we're going to do a little switcheroo. We're going to retreat into this one. And we're going to switch back into this one. And then we're going to Dede change. So we're certainly ramping up pretty quick here. And now i got a Bird Keeper and a Switch, which is absolutely crazy because now I'm going to be at that 10 damage that we talked about. So check this out. We've got Bird Keeper here, 20 more damage, three more cards. Oh my gosh. Did we do it? Did I do I'm so close. I'm so close. I think we're a little bit short. Uh, we are so close to a KO. I needed like just a quick ball to get the jinx, and I could have put it onto the, uh, I could have put it onto the spear tomb. But we are swinging for so much damage here; it's absurd. Uh, I've got the zigzagoon and the two scoops, so I'm dealing nine two hundred and seventy damage. Wow! I mean, that's just so much. I don't want to waste my scoop up nets yet and the zigzagoon, just knowing that, uh, knowing that uh, I'm not quite there. So we're gonna do that. And then I'm going to take the knockout with Angus Cry. Or not take the knockout. I'm going to deal 280 damage. So we're certainly very close. But unfortunately, not going to be 
getting that knockout. If I had just one more damage counter on my Spear Tomb, then we could have taken the KO because I've got plus 30 damage here with the Galarian Zigzagoon and the Scoop Up Nets. I think playing a second Zigzagoon in the deck would be pretty cool. I mean, it does, I guess, at the end of the day, only give us, you know, plus 10 more damage, grand scheme of things, right? Because you still have four Nets and you have one Zigzagoon. So at max, you know, you're only getting here you're getting uh what one and then plus four we're getting five pings right now we would get six pings if we played a second zigzagoon but uh it's not going to make the difference here i'm not going to be able to take that knockout but i can't take that knockout with assault gate which is still pretty good not going to be able to add up to a knockout here either uh which is a little bit sad now if my opponent can take the um, you know, if they could take the knockout on my Spear Tomb with Zigzagoons alone here, that would be a little bit stressful because they could take a, you know, multi-prize turn, which I certainly don't love. But I think that uh, we certainly have put on a lot of pressure. You can see turn two, 280 damage. This deck is not playing around with the Bird Keepers and the Switch and the Scoop of Net. There's plenty of ways to pivot in and out of the active position. This deck actually is the closest thing, I think, to playing Zapdos. If you like Jirachi Zapdos, that deck right when uh, right when Team Up Zapdos was released, this deck feels as close to that deck, I think, as you could get uh, while not being that deck. And what's crazy is they actually, wow, they play Switch, they put themselves to 300 damage. Now I could do it with the Galarian Zigzagoon. All I have to do is find one more scoop up net. I've got 30 damage in my hand. And this is why I didn't play the Zigzagoon down. I wanted to see, are they going to maybe give me a couple extra damage counters with the Spike Muth? I don't want to reveal the fact that I've got all the cards I need in my hand already to take that knockout. I'm definitely just promoting the Hoopa here. That's fine if they knock this thing out. Uh, it's not going to be the end of the world. But we're geared up to have a pretty crazy turn uh this next turn for sure the hoopa actually can't knock out my assault gate hoopa so if they swing into it for 90 damage that's totally or no this is evil admonition never mind we're getting our hoopas crossed evil admonition can only deal uh 40 50 damage right now to my active hoopa so that's certainly not going to be taking a knockout either but i'm really excited about this next turn if i just find one more scoop up net we're taking three prizes on that Eternatus VMAX and leaving my opponent's board state just completely, uh, completely compromised. So we've got a big turn ahead for sure. I feel like we just have to research because it gives me the biggest draw possible. Now I have played quite a few switches already, two. But I could find Hiding Darkness Energy. If I find Hiding Darkness Energy, it's still it's not that big of a deal because I need to find um, a Scoop Up Net. But if I find a Scoop Up Net and a Hiding Darkness Energy, I could retreat the Hoopa. Mm, that's still not enough to knock out the active. It's got 130 HP. Certainly very interesting. I think I want to play one of these Hoopas in this deck, actually, just for this kind of situation. My opponent's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I would be taking a knockout. All right, we're going to start going in with... Our dudes though so here we go we're gonna scoop up net certainly start diving in here and I think maybe I could bird keeper it's just such a close I think I would rather find the scoop up net kind of at all costs there's two scoop up nets in the deck how many switch do I have no switch left in the deck. Well, I've committed to it at this point because I've discarded it. So we're going to grab the Jirachi. I'm going to put the Cape of Talkness on the Hoopa and the Active. It's fine. And we're going to put the Jirachi down and we're going to research. And we're just going to see how this ends up playing out. Okay, we did not find it yet. I also did not find an energy. So I'm just going to put this thing down. We have to just build a little bit more spites and then pass. And I have to really hope that my opponent, strangely enough, I have to hope that they do not boss up my Zigzagoon. <laughs> if my opponent bosses up my Zigzagoon right now, I'm feeling incredibly bad. 
Though, if they do, I still do play an Ordinary Rod in the deck. We can Ordinary Rod the Zigzagoon back into the deck, but it'll make this play a lot harder. I don't think that they'll boss up my Zigzagoon, though. I think they'd be more likely to boss up my Spear Tomb and knock it out or use Dangerous Drill and take a bonus prize there. But we're definitely uh, very anxious about what this next turn could turn out to look like. I've got... How many abilities? I've got five. This thing is doing 110 damage right now with Evil Admonition. Not enough to knock out a Dedenne, fortunately, so they can't stick me there, but uh, they can deal a lot of damage for sure. And this thing, it's got 50 damage on it, so it, they still miss a KO? That's crazy. Oh, we live by 10. That is so wild. I think I can't play bird keeper i kind of have to scoop up net this thing out of the active position which is crazy because if i bird keeper it just gets ko'd and my opponent gets to take a prize so that's kind of this weird situation that i'm in and i kind of have to find double scoop up net so i'm going to quick ball away this and we're going to look in the deck i'm going to thin that out and i'm definitely looking for double scoop up net because i don't want to knock out my own hoopa which would feel very bad. And sure enough, I find neither of them, which is kind of epic. So we're going to Building Spite here. And I'm going to Building Spite here. And I'll put another Cape of Toughness down over here. And we're just chilling one more turn. That's fine. It's actually, it's fine. So long as my opponent doesn't play Scoop Up Net and ping this Hoopa for Knockout, that would be a little bit of a pain. But a lot of us are not playing Scoop Up Net. So that's fine. If they just have to swing into this Hoopa, they didn't have boss last turn, so I'm thinking maybe they don't have it again this turn. And then eventually, we'll take that knockout on the Eternatus with a 10 more damage. And uh, hopefully then maybe find that Ordinary Rod and throw some attackers back into the deck, because I've had to be a little bit heavy-handed here, just using research every turn to draw through the deck. But our route to victory is pretty clear. Uh, looks like they're powering up Crobats. You know, they want to maybe have an alternative attacker the following turn. I know I'm low on switches, so we're just going to go up with this Spear Tomb in the active, and or we're going to go up with this Spear Tomb in the active, right? Because it's got 130 HP, so I can Building Spite and then move a damage counter. Yeah, I want to save this one kind of in my back pocket over here. And I should have a pretty decent shot, you would think, of finding the scoop up nets, okay? I think we're in a pretty good spot here. So take a look into the deck. It's just all, it's all gas in the deck, chat. It's all gas, so here we go. There's the one scoop up net that we desperately wanted. So we finally get to take the three prizes that we have been looking for this entire game. But now my opponent gets to clear all of these Pokemon, whoever they want, off of their bench. So that's a little bit hectic. Uh, they're probably going to remove the damaged Crobat, I have to imagine, and uh, maybe this other Crobat, but they might keep this one with the extra energy on it. I'll take my three prizes. But by keeping that one with the extra energy on it um, there, now I have a route to win the game very quickly. So we're going to Ominous Posture, move that up to the active, and we're going to Building Spite here on the active, and I get to Building Spite on the bench as well. And then we're going to take a knockout on the active. Uh, I think I want to save the hiding energy. So we're going to do that. And now I've got a pretty loaded deck and hand. There's just like not really that much left that I need in order to clean up this game. It's just boss's orders. That's it. This thing's already doing over 200 damage right now. We just bring up the Crobat and we end the game. So we're just crossing our fingers, hoping my opponent does not pull off any sort of crazy double prize turn shenanigans where they go dangerous drill here and knock out the active, that would be pretty bad. That being said, I do play Ordinary Rod and I could potentially pull some things off. I do have two switch in my hand. There's one more scoop up net left. So there is a little bit more damage I can inflict to myself. And of course, I've got the double boss's orders in my hand. We play four boss in the list just for these end of game scenarios where we want to bring up the Crobat and knock it out. So I think things are looking pretty good. They've got Switch. They're going to damage their own Crobat going into Hoopa. They do, do they have to just take the knockout? And do we just have it? 
they got any tricks up their sleeve. I mean, we've kept ourselves out of the danger zone here. They're going to sulky this one. That's fine. We still have game pretty easily. I could put, uh, I have double switch in hand and boss's orders. So that's it. We just go switch into Jirachi. And then we can Stellar Wish. We got the scoop up net. What's crazy is I, I could just do this as many times as I needed to, but we already have got it here. I can building spite. And uh, we're just going to boss up the Crobat, scoop up net, the Jirachi, and we Anguish Cry for 220 damage and take the game. That's it. Just another Eternatus B Max. Wow. And this deck is looking really powerful. Looks like I'm going to be playing second this game, playing against a fire deck. And we open a pretty good opening hand as well. I can quick ball bird keeper, get the turn one. Assault gate with our Hoopa, but not really trying to assault gate a Volcanion. Doesn't really take a knockout, doesn't really set up any relevant math. I would much rather assault gate that Senti Scorch there, which seems pretty good. They've got the heat fire energies in their deck as well, so that's something to look out for. We're going to great ball first and whiff it. And then it looks like we're going to quick ball away probably the Ordinary Rod. And I think I'm just going to Bird Keeper into a Jirachi. There's not really any sense in using Bird Keeper to go into an Assault Gate Hoopa right now because it just doesn't really do that much, right? So we're just going to do that. Still have not find the Spike Myth yet, so I'm not going to grab too many Switch cards because it's not really time to combo off and do that. Just going to grab another quick ball, and I could just lay a couple of these guys down. And I'm not going to go in and attack because we just want to kind of have ourselves a stable board position. Put the Hiding Dark here, and I'm just going to save all these cards. Next turn, we do anticipate my opponent's probably going to play a Welder or something like that. So they might Welder on Sentry Scorch coming in and attack, or they might Welder onto Volcanion and High Heat Blast, and then I have to knock out the Volcanion or gust around it will be our two options. And we do play four bosses orders in the deck, so we have a decent odds of being able to do that. Looks like they're switching into Senti Scorch, though. They just want to get a big Senti Scorch going. And judging by the Heat Fire Energy, this might be a version of Senti Scorch that plays a lot of uh, yeah, plays a lot of healing. You know, it might be a very kind of hyper potion oriented defensive build of Senti Scorch V Max. So we can see they got the double heat fire energy there on the active. If they find their V Max, they're going to be able to take a knockout on my Jirachi because of weakness. And uh, yeah, deal a decent amount. I mean, even without weakness, they're taking a knockout. But yeah, they missed the V Max. So now is our time. We can come in and knock out the Senti Scorch with a Spear Tomb if I can just find Stadium. So I want to see if I can find the Stadium first. There it is. So we've got the Stadium. And now it is time to combo off. So we're going to scoop up net here to fully heal. And then we're going to put the, I've already got the hiding in darkness down. We're going to put that, we're going to go hiding darkness here. And then we want to retreat here, switch here, and then Quick ball away. I think I'm ready to just, that is my ordinary ride. Yeah, we put this down, put the Oracle down. I could data change and then maybe like, maybe we end up finding, let we'll just make sure the Denny's on the deck. Yeah, maybe we end up finding Bird Keeper or something like that and just deal like a ton of damage. That'd be kind of cool. So we're gonna go here and just data change. And I'm also looking for top escapes would be really good. Uh, sure enough, don't find that, but I do find double switch, so that's kind of cool. Uh, have I building spited yet? No. Uh, but I do have the toughness cape too, so I can build some spite. And then I've already retreated, so I can put six on it, do 190. So we're just a little bit short of a KO there, unfortunately. So I can build spite here as well. Oh no, I'm not. Not close to a KO because of the heat fire energies. Yes, we're a little bit, we're quite a bit shy. So I'm going to save the switches, I think, because I don't want to just bird them like that. I think they're better used in combination with like retreating. You can just get more mileage out of your dudes that way. So we're just going to go here and I think just soften this thing up for a decent amount of damage. I'm not going to put the Cape of Toughness down yet. 
Hi there, we're just gonna anguish cry. Save my switches. And then if my opponent takes a knockout on the spear tomb, that's fine because I can then use my Oracorio GX to help draw more cards. Certainly will help us in this match. Now, definitely hoping that my opponent doesn't have like a crazy healing card or something like that. If they Mallow and Lawn this turn and switched and were able to get the Senti Scorch V Max, I would be kind of upset. I'm not gonna lie. I mean the Senti Scorch V Max, theoretical Senti Scorch V Max has got like 360 HP right now because of the two heat fire energies that they've got. Could move it all on to Heat Tran. Start taking knockouts with that. Sure enough, there is the VMAX. So this VMAX got 360 health right now. What support are they gonna play? They do have the Malawan. I knew it. I knew it. There's the Malawan, yes. So they're gonna switch probably into the Heat Tran and just move all of the uh energy onto Heat Tran as well. But What's funny is because of the spike move, they actually take 20 more damage. So the Malalana only heals 100 as opposed to 120. And it's just going to hop burn GX. So if there's any consolation here, it's that my opponent's just not really drawn super well. So that's pretty good for us. We're going to go here uh, because I've got the Hiding Darkness energy and we got the Retreat. We're going to Dance of Ancients to kick this turn off. Dance of Tribute, not Ancients. Different dance, Andrew. And then uh, we've got Scoop Up Net, which is cool, and a couple of Switch cards. So we're going to put the Cape of Toughness here, and I think we go Build Spite. I mean, how much do I need? And we can go Free Retreat. That's fine. And then Switch, and we're back, so that's cool. So we're just going to go Free Retreat here. And then we could go switch into here. And then we could go switch again. It's cool. Just get a little bit of damage on everybody, right? <laughs> and now all my dudes are powered up and ready to go. I like that. I love that you can use Spike Mo you know, the Spike Moth Stadium more than once a turn. That's like one of my favorite parts about the deck is that you could just have these turns where you have all these switch cards and you just do a ton uh, of damage to yourself all at once, right? And we saw we just kind of comboed there, took advantage of the Spike Muth, and were able to just kind of make some things happen during this turn. Now, taking down this VMAX is not going to be the easiest thing in the world, especially since we could tell that my opponent just plays the heal cards, right? They've got those in the deck. Fortunately, they are not gusting. They are using research this turn, so they're going to get another fire energy, take a knockout on the Spear Tomb. I could knock out the Dedenne GX this next turn, that is certainly something we've got available to us. Or I swing into the Senti Scorch. So I think we kind of have to swing into the Senti Scorch. I think that, that seems optimal. So let's put this thing up. Because then I just can boss one of these Volcanians for game, and that would be pretty good. So we're going to go Dance of Tribute and see what I'm looking at, though. We do have Bird Keeper and Cape of Toughness. Love to see that. But I'm worried about the healing cards, like I said. I just don't think that my opponent is going to be nice enough to give me another Dedenne GX to quickly kind of take this game, right? So I think they're probably going to probably play defensive cards, reset stamp, you know, so on and so forth. So certainly something to think about. Now, I think we are probably going to just Bird Keeper, uh, but I have to place the Cape of Toughness first. Yes, don't be bad, Andrew. Very good. So we're going to Bird Keeper uh, into this guy. And then we've got Zigzagoon and a couple of Scoop Up Nets, which is pretty good. Still no Jirachi yet. Can build some spite on this guy as well. And I'm thinking that we put, just put the energy on, swing with the active. I can Quick Ball for a Jirachi just to have it. Uh, I don't really see myself super utilizing. My Ordinary Rod's gone. Wow, actually, these are my final two Spear Tombs. So... That's a little bit tough, especially if they play a Tool Scrapper. It could be really bad. Okay, it's fine. So we're definitely going to have to get some mileage out of this thing. For sure. Build some Spite over here. I guess, yeah, I mean, we just have to swing. There's not really any other any other options or things to do about it. They're just going to have to swing with Angus Cry. 
and being down my ordinary rod is like really tough. So I'm gonna have to knock this thing out. Hopefully they don't heal it. They heal it with a hyper potion. Then I'm diving in and I have to take a knockout on it with this spear tomb. Down one scoop up net. I mean, with Assault Gate, we're doing 90. With the Zigzagoon and a bunch of nets, I can knock out a Volcanion with Assault Gate. So, you know, we have that option available to us. I think I have one more Hoopa left in the deck. So if I have to two hit KO a Volcanion, we certainly can make that happen. We're just hoping that my opponent does not have a Tool Scrapper or one of them Hyper Potions. Those would be bad cards for us to see right now. Because we've kind of got all this stock in this VMAX going down. But, you know, if the VMAX got 340 HP with the Heat Fire Energy and gets Hyper Potioned, but they've already attached here. So they can't Hyper Potion now because then they won't be attacking. So I think they have to just stay the course, take the knockout with the Senti Scorch VMAX. We go up here, take that knockout. Then I have to figure out one more prize. It's probably going to have to be on a Volcanion with the Hoopa, getting the three pings. I actually have, I have everything I need in order to knock out one of those Volcanions in hand right now. Um, but it could get a little bit more complicated because if my opponent stamps me, Marnie's me, all that, right? That could be a little bit tough. Now, 340 HP, that means that I need to deal 180 damage to this thing, meaning that uh, I've actually got enough damage counters on the Spear Tomb right now, so I don't really terribly have to worry about that. So we've got that guaranteed knockout. That's cool. I'm going to put the Spike Move down, and we're going to put the Energy here. Yeah, we're definitely going to Dance to Tribute. I'm already dealing 200-something damage, so that's totally fine. I think we've got the game winning boss in our hands. I could put the damage onto the Volcanium, but I don't want to give my opponent any sort of shenanigans that they can pull off, right? So we're not going to do that. I'm just going to get rid of this Marshadow. That seems fine. And get ourselves another Hoopa so that we just have these dudes ready to go. And then I'm not going to play any of these supporters or anything. And we're just going to take this knockout with Anguish Cry. I'm not going to play the Jinx down. Seems fine. I can Building Spite the active one more time. I don't really see at the point. At this point, like, I'm going down to a uh, to a Tool Scrapper no matter what. So I guess it'd be cool if they, like, boss around it or something, you know, if it doesn't end up getting KO'd. Um, I guess, you know, I was kind of already past the point of no return as far as, like, if this thing does 50 damage to me, it's KOing me anyway. At 7, I was still there. I could have benched the Jinx and moved the damage counter off and done just at six but then still six plus five is still 110 so it wouldn't have mattered there either we're just hoping that they don't reset my hand and that we could just take the uh we could just take the win that would be that would be the goal here yes but my hand is gigantic so if they have reset stamp they will play it and sure enough it is marnie that we are looking at okay so tough but fine uh theoretically you know we can still get the job done now they're probably not knocking out to denny or oracorio with uh probably not knocking out to denny or oracorio with a volcanian and high heat blast so i think we're probably chilling in that regard now i could double boss actually double boss the denny might be you know not a horrible play either but uh let's kind of see where we're at here we're gonna use the great ball just to reorder the deck. So now I have options to find. I could research and then let's say, I think I have plenty of boss in my hand, right? Or in the deck, yeah, yeah, I'll research first because now I, I theoretically could find the Zigzagoon double net. So if I dance a tribute into the double nets, that'd be cool. Got one net, very close. Maybe I find a Jirachi. So now, I can go retreat, and I have a switch in my hand. So if I find a second net here, it's game over. Yep. So we go ping the Volcanion, and we do it three times. Three plus nine, magic number, and we take the win with our spear tomb deck wow i mean just coming down here real clutch last turn of the game we assault gate 
for a perfect 120 damage, taking the win with Spear Tomb Hoopa. This deck is a ton of fun to play. And that's it for the video. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell. If you're looking for the newest Pokemon trading card game on line codes, make sure to check out fullgripcodes.com for instant PTCGO code delivery. Supporting the shop at Full Grip Games directly supports the content I create here on Tricky Gym. If you've got extra cards lying around the house and you want to get some cash for them, we are always buying cards here at Full Grip Games. Doesn't matter if they're commons, rares, hollows, or full arts, we pay for your Pokemon cards. So make sure to check out the Fulgrip Games buy list. We've got the link in the description below. And that's it for the video. You guys take it easy and have a great day. Peace.